hello, hello, hello. It's been a little while since I've done a, a live video. I don't know why, but <laughs> it just hasn't really uh, occurred to me to do, so I haven't done one. But today I put, <clears throat> excuse me, put a message in one of the groups to see if anyone had some questions. Um, got a few, which I sort of answered within the group, um, you know, through texting, um, <coughs> typing, whatever, excuse me. This always happens when I get on here. I have to drink. Hold on. It's just water. <clears throat> okay. So let me try and hold this thing a little steady. Um, so I'm going to answer some questions or comment on them. I don't know if I can answer them. They're um, sort of questions, sort of not questions. A lot of how-to kind of stuff, which probably most of you know we don't really do here because <laughs> there's no such thing. Um, that's not really what this is all about. This, this, it, well, let me just quickly say, you know, what we, what I talk about here and, and um, what we discuss is um, this inside-out understanding of life, how, how, um, how it's our thoughts, not and not really when we say thoughts we don't just mean thoughts we mean it's 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 our perceptions of the whole world it's our perceptions of everything that comes into us through our senses um that create our experience of life and that includes thought it includes sight and sound and 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 um the feelings within our body and everything else all of that stuff which is what sydney banks might call um the three principles, mind, consciousness, and thought. But I've been thinking of it lately as just our perceptions. That's what's creating our experience of life. So that might help some of you who think, um, who have been confused by uh, the word thought and thinking that we're talking about it's our thinking that causes our experience. Sometimes it's specific thoughts, but oftentimes it's just our whole perception of, the, of, of what's going on in the moment. Any little thing can can create our experience it's it's all it's coming to us through senses and perception so with that out of the way that might help actually uh with some of these other questions as well so michelle um had a a question i guess i'm trying to i don't know if i need to read it all but um so she says when you're caught up in negative thinking i know i'll be okay but in the midst of it you can't see the light I know negative thinking is normal, but when you have OCD thinking, nothing is normal that you think. Been struggling for a few weeks. It seems endless. How do you cope with it? It's going to be okay. How do you cope with it's going to be okay when you're in the midst of horrible thoughts? And then she said, be easy on me, <laughs> Well, I Well, can't, I can't do the easy part. I just say what I say. It's nothing personal. If, if it doesn't sound easy... Don't mind me. And Michelle, I think you know me enough to know that it's nothing personal. But I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth. So um, I apologize in advance if it's if it seems mean or hard. Um, um, there were some follow-ups to that as well. But a um, whole bunches of things that other people posted too. But let me just, um, you know, it's interesting because Michelle, you use all the buzzwords that we hear in in the three principles language you know i i know i'll be okay it'll pass um it's normal to think that and blah 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 but that that's bullshit right <laughs> that's bullshit when you're in it it means nothing um just like you said um it doesn't it's 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 all just words that mean nothing and it's mm -hmm. and it's and it's like not true in the moment that it will pass it sure I mean it sure doesn't seem like it right so I hear you I mean I've had times tons of times it happens to me all the time when I'm you know worried or whatever's happening um where I'm completely caught up and it's this I can't be like oh it's just your thinking don't worry it'll pass I could say that to myself and and it doesn't it doesn't do anything for me it's nothing in fact it makes me feel worse because it's not passing and it does seem real, and it looks like things outside of me are, are causing me to feel that way. So I'm not telling you to, to um, 
that it should be any other way. I'm not telling you that to tell yourself it'll pass and all the other blah, blah, blah that we hear. It, that It doesn't mean anything, those words. And that's why you're still struggling because you're thinking there's something you're doing wrong. You're thinking like, how come when I tell myself, oh, it'll pass, it always passes, it doesn't help. Um, because it doesn't help anybody. <laughs> it's not just you. It doesn't help. That's why all those psychologies that, that where they give you techniques to do things don't work. They work temporarily sometimes. And then ego gets in and um, says, nope, we're not going to let this one keep working. So these techniques don't work. And that's why we don't say, tell yourself it'll pass. And anybody who does tell you that is, is probably new to this understanding. And it's worked for them, you know, a few times. Yeah, sometimes it used to work for me. But it doesn't. It's not helpful. Um, we know it's not helpful when we live this, um, when we're really in the midst of something. So I can't give you any techniques that will help you when you're within this stuff. Because you're, when you're in it for a few days or however long you said weeks, um, you're, you're, you're in it. Your perceptions, your mind consciousness and thought or the energy of that, however you want to think of it, is creating your reality in that moment, uh, in those moments, all of them. Um, but I think if you look at it carefully, now you said weeks, Michelle. If you look at it carefully, I'm guessing that during those weeks, there were moments where you weren't completely consumed by anxiety uh, or whatever it is that um, seems to be troubling you. I, you know, I'm sure like overall, you know, you had a certain percentage of time that made it that it's, this is going on for weeks and I'm consumed by this. But I think if you look at it, honestly, you'll see, you know, you did your job, presumably, I know you have a, I know you work, um, and you probably get caught up in doing that and, and, and felt fine during those times. Um, that's because, you know, that other part of the mind kind of shut off and let you do your business let you mm -hmm. let you keep going and so that's you know that's what happens <laughs> um and so it's not in fact it's it, it's not helpful and it's more harmful to be thinking that you're doing something wrong with this understanding um because that i think a lot of what's causing you and others um suffering is thinking that you're not getting this that you're doing something wrong that you should be able to tell yourself i know it's just thinking hi michelle i see you're you're on now um you, you know you know it's just thinking and blah 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 but it's not helping and so that's causing the suffering because you it's a new you know it's a new cause of suffering you had all now you should know better than to be suffering but that's, it's just, that's, that's just not true. It's just another, it's just another thing to put on your mind that can create that suffering for you. Um, so it's, it's, it's not, it's not about that at all. Look, look towards what's underneath all that. Look towards those times during the day. How can it be if you're having times during the day where, you know, your mind is on other things and you're, feeling relatively peaceful there could be stuff still going on in the back of your mind but how's that happening you know get curious about it um this isn't self-help this isn't i'm gonna feel great the rest of my life that's not this if you want that you know there's tons you've probably been studying that stuff for hundreds of years um go back and and do that stuff you know and see what works for you but that's not what this is it's just it's just seeing this is how it is and it's it is what it is. It sucks, right? It sucks when we're caught up. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. But nothing I can do about it. And so when I don't beat myself up about about not seeing it, you know, seeing the world outside in and knowing that I must be seeing something wrong, but if, if I cannot beat myself up over it, and I'm not giving you that as a technique, but when I don't, I don't suffer as much. When I do, I do suffer as much. That's all. It's, it's, I'm just telling you how it works. I'm not saying don't do it, do do it. It doesn't matter. You can suffer or not suffer. Like, it's neither one is bad or good. 
Um, we will, we will suffer. We will do things wrong. We will beat ourselves up. It's, it's so much of it. I see with so many people is trying to be perfect in life. Like it's especially hard for those of us who like always want to get things and be the one who knows it all. No, who know it all. Um, and I find that when they're not, when they're still feeling shitty or whatever, they're thinking, you know, they have this now um, beating themselves up because they're not perfect again and, oh, I should know this. And, you know, it's another thing that they're not, that they suck at, let's say, right? You can't suck at the three principles. You can't suck at the inside out understanding. There's nothing to suck at. Like, there's nothing to, to do. There's nothing to, there's nothing even to get. It's just, it's just, it's just how it works. Your perceptions, your thoughts are creating this experience of this world. And this world is sucky a lot of times. <laughs> I mean, it is. And, and it doesn't, but, but, but you can be, you can be this character in this game, in this movie, whatever you want to think of it as, whatever analogy we're just this character in this game. This is how, for me, it often comes to me. And um, most of the time I don't see that. I mean, I feel like me, like myself, Jill, like I am Jill. But sometimes I catch glimpses that Jill is a character, right? And I can sometimes, rarely, observe Jill doing her life, you know, and, and, and living her life and having these things happen to her or seemingly happen to her and having people in her life do things around her that she may not like. Um, most of the time I, I feel like I'm, I'm Jill. I'm the one doing it. Um, but, but I can catch those glimpses that it's not me that, that like I can be aware of, of that stuff going on and, and what's happening is what's happening. And, and, and when I can, I don't know, when, when a little piece of me just is observing it that way, the the character is still experiencing the anxiety or the worry or the stress or the whatever. That character is still experiencing it. But but a piece of me somehow sees it and it's what's happening. Now it's it it I'll suffer more when I'm completely unaware of all that. Um, you know, that's where I, I feel like we, any of us, even if you feel like you don't get this at all, the fact that you're aware of any of it is, is useful, is helpful, is like sets you apart from most of the population who is, who are robots in the game, you know, who are just the character in the game and not having any idea that they're that they're like in a game, that there is peace of mind underneath it, even if it doesn't feel like there's peace of mind. Like there's still a piece of us that knows that. And so that gives us the advantage over the rest of them. So for all of us who are, who want to be the best at stuff, <laughs> hold on to that. Cause, cause like, that's pretty cool that, you know, we, we have that little bit of knowledge, even if we don't see it most of the time. Um, let me move on a little bit see if there's I think most of the questions kind of all relate to the same thing. I mean, this is the same thing I talk about. Uh, this is like all there is to talk about. So it's going to pretty much answer all the questions. Um, what else here? Blah, blah. Okay, I'm going to skip forward a little bit. I know Meredith sort of had the same, you know, questions or concerns that Michelle had. Um, that Diane said something about, um, I just want to quickly mention this because she had thought or believed that I had said something about, um, and in, in the past that, that, that this understanding was about accepting our thoughts. And, um, I, quickly jumped in and because I don't want people to say think that I've said that um I don't think I've said that I hope I haven't said that I may have said it in the past um 
but uh, it, it could be that that it was just misunderstood because that's what happens a lot we hear you know we say stuff and then other people interpret it their own way and say oh well yeah she just said accept our thoughts but no 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 i'm not i'm not saying accept our thoughts um at all because our thoughts aren't us they're that they're they're all part of that character who's not us um and it's like i i have a video on this it's like this parasite like that that just invades this body i mean maybe even the whole body is a parasite i don't know that um you know just gives us these weird crazy freaking weird old thoughts that we have that come into us i mean we sometimes have really weird thoughts that come that we just kind of be like that's weird um and and so it's not about accepting them it's knowing that like like it's not who we are and and again i i identify with my thoughts most of the time too so when i talk about this stuff i'm talking at a um you know the way it is <laughs> not necessarily the way i always see it i do catch glimpses of it and i do know intellectually you know for me at least what seems to be true um so it's you don't have to it's don't accept your thoughts just just look at who you really are like where how how is there some piece of you that's able to observe those thoughts to begin with right how how is it you could observe those thoughts if they were you like it doesn't really make sense when you get down to it it's more likely to me that that the real me is, is somehow this this awareness that's like looking out through my eyes um and experiencing this world and again so it comes back to that character that i said at, at earlier that um you know to be able to observe jill doing her stuff all day long um and and that part is the real me and that part actually that real me is the same as all of you guys like we all are that some people call it consciousness um we all are that energy i guess maybe is what it is that's looking out through all of our different eyes and having completely different experiences of this game of this life um and it it loves it all it loves to you know the it's so cool in a way when you think of it how each of our little characters are completely different yet we all work the same way but we're so different and so this consciousness or life experience or whatever it is gets to the awareness some people call it gets to experience this world universe i don't know um as all these different characters but it's the same experience and sometimes i think of it it all all of our experiences become the whole you know and we all add to the whole that is us by everything that ever happens to any of us um it all becomes part of the the whole which is us we are all the whole we are all the same we are that awareness living this seemingly living this character and kind of when you when you think of it that way yeah when you're caught up it doesn't that doesn't help <laughs> but but there's a piece for me there's a piece of me that at least can't take this all so seriously like like i know that even the really bad stuff that happens you know when people die and blah and all that stuff that's gonna happen i mean we it's the one thing we deny in this world right is death and it's the one thing that's for certain it's going to happen to all of us and everybody we know um even that like it loses a little bit of its fear um when we kind of know that it's not all there is this is not this isn't life this isn't real i mean it's life this isn't i don't know mm -hmm. this is it's a game right <laughs> it's a it's a game so just like you play Nintendo or whatever other games you like to play like it seems like a video game to me um you know you get you get these certain number of lives and then you start over again i don't know that that's kind of how how i see it 
Um, let me see if there's anything else that I think Thomas had a question that he put up or, um, but it's, I think I pretty much answered it. Um, you know, he, he talked, he asked about staying optimistic when you're, you're having, you know, anxious thoughts and stuff, which is the same thing. I think I feel like Michelle asked, um, so Thomas, hopefully I've kind of answered that it's, I have nothing to tell you because <laughs> there's nothing to do. You don't have to stay optimistic. You just, you just, whatever you're feeling, you're feeling, and that's what's happening. And, um, that's what's happening to your character at this time. That's the, that's it. That's your, that's, that's the, the, the role that that actor, you, is playing at the moment. Um, Meredith. Okay, one other thought Meredith said. Wisdom. In the thick of a thought storm, we quickly lose sight of it. When I'm in a high level of consciousness, I know wisdom always has my back. What it looks to me is I will always know how to handle or react in any situation. Yeah, and that's true because that's... That's that, I don't know, maybe there's a piece of consciousness or something that is guiding us somehow. Um, you know, I used to think of it as my inner guide. I don't know if that's true or not. You know, it's a nice story and it's nice to think about. And it does feel that way a lot of times. And yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't seem like that when we're caught up in a, in a thought storm. But it doesn't really matter. It, it's, it's there. Or if we believe it's there, it's there. Um, and, you know, if you look back, it always does seem to have our backs. But that, I don't know, that's a little bit trite as well. Like, I mean, what does have our backs mean? It doesn't mean we're never going to die. It doesn't mean we're not going to get hurt. It doesn't mean bad stuff's going to happen. So I don't know how helpful it is <laughs> having uh, knowing that. But it, it it's, there's something there that gives us ideas and um you know help helps us to live in this life so yeah you don't we don't always see it but it is always there and we're always attached to it and you're welcome michelle um there was one other thing karen asked about she said when when your daughter is suffering and you know you have the answer but they won't listen it's very hard to stand back and not worry about it all what do i do so I answered <laughs> um, something to the extent of, yeah, go and worry about it. <laughs> like, why, like, why wouldn't you? I do that, too, when my daughter's having trouble and won't listen to me, which is pretty much every day. Um, I, I, can, I can get caught up in worry about her, too. That's normal. That's what human beings do, right? Um, but the other piece of that is to, to for us... As parents, the best thing we can do for our kids is is to not see them is to see them as not broken, or to not see them as broken. Um, because if you think there's something wrong with them and that they need to be fixed, they're gonna feel that from you. And yeah, they're not gonna listen because they're not broken, and they don't need to be fixed. And they know this because they have wisdom as well. And um, I know it's it's not easy. It's they they sometimes look pretty broken. Um, but no matter what's going on with them, they're not broken because they can't be broken just like we can't be broken. And they have wisdom and they will, their thoughts change just like ours do. So they can be in the middle of a, whatever's going on in, you know, our children's lives, depending on their age. Um, and they can suddenly come out of it just like we do. And they will. And it doesn't mean, you, I mean, maybe you do have good advice for your daughter, maybe you don't, but um, that kids, I don't know how old your daughter is, but, you know, they may at some point, their wisdom may say, hey, maybe mom does know something, or their wisdom may tell them something else. Maybe I don't need mom's help, and I'm going to figure this out by myself. But there's no, you know, just because you think you have the right answer doesn't mean it is right for them. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't, but that's not necessarily the one solution um, is, is for her to have to listen to you. Um, I've, I've learned more from my own daughter um, um, when I, because I've, I've mixed in too when she's, you know, been going through stuff and it looks like she's going to be stuck in it forever and I, and I 
you know, try to fix things. And so she, she's told me, you're just making it worse. And I've, I've been slowly, slowly learning to just leave her alone. Um, she could be caught up in horrible, horrible thoughts and, um, like an hour later be fine. So who knows, right? They're, they're, our kids, regardless of their age, are human just like us and they go through the thought storms just like we do. Um, so I think I will end it there. I don't even know. It doesn't show me, isn't showing me time for some reason. So we just asked in here, hi Jill, you're going to be doing regular posts again. I find your words help me remind myself how to stay on track. Um, I don't know, Zoe. I, I hope so. I don't, you know, I'm kind of just living my life as I'm living it and it just occurred to me to do something today. I was in the mood for it. I think maybe it's spring because it's getting nicer out and I've got a little, you know, I just kind of feel like doing stuff again. Um, so maybe, um, but you can go to my YouTube channel or the, the Facebook group here and um, find all the old videos too because you won't remember them and they're just as good to, to re-watch again if I do say so myself. I, I, I listen to them again myself and get new insights. I read my blog posts again and get new insights. So, um, you know, if you're ever in the, in the need for a little Jill, go ahead and um, watch the same old ones. But I, I am, you know, hoping to try it and do some more, but I, I don't know. I can't guarantee anything. I just go with the flow and <laughs> we'll see what happens. So hi everyone who said hi to me. I kind of was just speaking and, and wasn't talking to y'all because sometimes I find that's annoying when I watch other people's videos. Um, and I will talk to you later. Feel free to put more questions in the group or if you're seeing this on YouTube, just you, you can put comments in as well. And I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.